Hey guys, welcome back to Sin Place, and today we have a quick recap of Doll of War 3 from Warhammer 40k, of course. And this is the multiplayer beta from the weekend from April 7th to April 9th, I think it was. And so, uh, just a short first impression, I guess. Uh, at, uh, oh, you can only play in multiplayer, I was only play, uh, able to play multiplayer and the tutorials. There, is no, there was no uh, campaign so far, which is basically the only thing I really I am looking for, if at all. And you see why. So, first of all, for those who don't know, Dawn of War is, uh, an, is it's built as an RTS by Relic. Relic who of course made uh, Dawn of War 1 and 2 of, obviously and Company of Heroes I don't know if they made anything else actually probably anyway so you probably know either uh, either one or one of the two either uh, Company of Heroes or Dawn of War maybe both so you know that uh, their games are based on uh, squad based RTS kind of type I guess but uh, yeah, so uh, Dawn of War 1 was pretty much base building, conquering points, and destroy the enemy. Uh, Dawn of War 2 was. I don't think there was any base building if I recall correctly. I didn't play much Dawn of War 2 because I think I didn't like it at all because I think it was mainly tier, take these troops, move around, kill kind of style. So now we have the Dawn of War 3, and well. Let me just put it like this. Um, it's like if you take an RTS, remove the the base building, and mix it together with a MOBA. Now I say I heard a lot of people say no, it's not like a MOBA at all. I don't know why they say this. Well, the difference from this to the MOBA is that you don't have any AI units. So you don't have basically you don't have any cheap units that are just running from A to B and attack the other base uh, automatically however you do have the, the heroes which are the main fact the main factor in a MOBA because uh, you can look at it how you want uh, but um, the AI units in a MOBA are basically just there to prevent uh, it's like a test to see if you're strong enough to attack the other base so once you you level you leveled up enough your hero becomes strong enough that the AI units are not an issue anymore. At which point you can attack the other base. So it's like a, it's it's a bit like a timer. The harder you make the AI units, the less, uh, the, the more time it will take you to get to the other base. Easy peasy. So now this here, uh, you kind of have the, you kind of produce the AI units yourself. What I mean with this is that uh, the units that you produce. Uh, your standard units they are in themselves pretty weak of course later on you will get units that are slightly better or stronger or harder or whatever but compared to your heroes they are like nothing and add to that that um, the heroes they use their own kind of resource to be to be uh, summoned and uh, once they die, they have a respawn timer, and then you can re recall them. I don't know if it. I don't know actually sure if you, if you need to pay again to have them recalled. But I don't. I don't think you have to. So basically, what you do is uh, like in a MOBA or Dota, like I, uh, I prefer to tell, call them, is that you build your basic units, you capture the resource nodes, you skirmish left and right. And you accumulate those special retribution points or whatever it's called, which will then eventually let you spawn your heroes. Now you can select three heroes of uh, I think it's a choice of six, five or six heroes. You can you can uh, choose, and each hero has a different cost and a different role. So you can go for early game like an early game hero that only costs like two of those pink gems or you can uh, go for late game heroes that are cost like 10 but uh, that are that much harder but of course uh, you need to be you need to survive the other sides heroes to, until that and uh, really uh, you can look at it at how you want 
uh, it's the heroes that make or break the game. Uh, you can have the, the number of units you need to cancel out one hero. Uh, it's it's not it's really it's it's not even fun anymore. Uh, of course, you can argue that uh, the the early game heroes are somewhat manageable, but that's kind of the nature. They can give you uh, an early advantage, but they will not uh, they will not get you through the game. So early early the early heroes are to counter the early early troops. For example, the the basic boy biggins, not the boy orc boys, and I don't actually know the name of all this, but they're really basic, like the tactical marines and whatever, whatever the equivalent in the elder elder and the orcs is. So, and once you go in mid-game, you have the mid-game heroes that pretty much can uh, uh, cancel out the mid-game units, and of course the late-game, the late-game units. And uh, yes, you will see in this video I put some uh, clips together to get behind the video. And you'll see that uh, it's extremely, at one point, it's from depending on where, where, where you stand at, it can be very frustrating or very fun to jump into a group of enemies with one of your heroes and just kill five, four, six units with a couple hits. So the kill radio is just hilarious. And then the rest, uh, yeah, basically the game resorts around uh, collecting resources by conquering resource nodes, which has to be upgraded with. Uh, some can be upgraded with different nodes. You have like power and uh, I think actually jello is retribution. Retribution and uh, power and uh, whatever the purple is. I probably have to mix it up. I know, I'm sure that power is the, the lightning signal, but that's just obvious. I know one is retribution, but I know which one is it. But you call the jello one of the credits and the pink one retribution. I don't know. Anyway, then. Uh, in order to beat the game, that's why it's not base building. It's you don't have to actually destroy the enemy base. What you have to do is to destroy the enemy generator. And if that sounds like a MOBA, it's yes, because that's that's what it is. It's the same principle. Uh, you have your base. For each player, I think for each player, there is a, a shield generator, a, a turret, a big ass turret, and then the power generator now the funny thing about this is <laughs> in the order they are put uh, put out so you'd expect the shield generator to be in between the tower and the power generator to protect both or at least uh, protect the power generator maybe uh, no the the shield generator you have to, of course, that's why it sits there. The shield generator sits in front of the turret, and you have to destroy the, the shield generator in order to the, be able to destroy the turret later on on this one. So, again, just really to, to get this really in, you have to destroy the generator that protects the turret, but can itself not be, is, itself is not protected at all. So, the only, the only way to protect your shield generator is by having your troops, your units around it and defend it. The turret that is protected by the shield generator is behind the shield generator and will not fire upon enemies because they are out of range. Basically the shield generator is just enough out of range for the turret so, not, so it cannot attack any units that attack it. Now that's the pit that's the pity to put aside. The next thing is that once the shield generator who protects nothing but itself has been destroyed, you can destroy a turret. Now, in order to get to reach the the power generator, you only have to destroy one turret, if I'm co if I'm correct. If we, uh, so you destroy the turret, which uh, is not protected by anything anymore, and then once you destroy the turret, you will move on to the power generator. And once the power generator is destroyed, the game is over. No matter how many troops are on the field, no matter what's going on. So be prepared for games where uh, both teams are attacking the enemy power generator at the same time, and matter of luck or seconds can decide who wins. Like in uh, Dota, 
or any mobile games actually when uh, people just don't care about defense and just both attack one goes on the left side one goes on the right side and then it's uh, oh we were at five percent we almost had them and uh, no bad luck so then uh, yeah let's go to the the whole base building bullshit uh, there is, uh, it's, it's really, let's see what the definition of base, base building is. Base building for me means that you can put together, put up a base that has a strategic and a tactical use, both in offense and defense. Offense being construction of units or buildings that can actively be used to attack, like imagine a rocket silo or something like that. Like if, for example, in Common and Conqueror you have several buildings that can be used to actively attack or be used as defense. Uh, so that's what I mean. You have, uh, again, Common and Conqueror is a good example for base building. Or you can also use, uh, of course, uh, StarCraft and WarCraft or whatever. Because uh, you actively have a base that is used, you can, for example, build several, several uh, buildings that produce the same unit in order to push one one kind of unit or you can make several you can build turrets to defend your base uh, walls even you have uh, anti-air and stuff and all that kind all that different all those different buildings which uh, which in the end make a base now in this game the base building is very limited let me see how limited it is uh, I played the. I, cho I only played the Space Marines in this beta weekend because I didn't want it too much. Uh, I will. I will have to try the other races in the next beta weekends. But for now, I just played the Space Marines, so get used to them. And yes, if I'm not, if I'm wrong again, please correct me if I'm wrong. I was able to build four buildings, three buildings that no, two buildings that can. can uh, wait, let me see, five buildings I think, five. The barracks, the heavy weapon, whatever it's called, heavy weapon doctrine, temple building, whatever, uh, the machine park, and the arsenal, and then the other building is the one you can build, the listening post that you can build on the resource node. So you have three buildings that can produce units, one building that is there to upgrade units, and one building that is just a, a post that you can you can uh, put on your resource points, like a turret. There is no turrets elsewhere, there is nothing else as far as I could tell. So again, if I'm wrong, please, please correct me. And uh, yeah, the whole game just plays like one big uh, MOBA-ish, RTS-ish, it's neither one. It it doesn't it doesn't do anything good actually. The again for the base building uh, there is no for example you you don't you don't need to build several buildings of the same type because the resources is the resource production is so low that uh, it wouldn't actually make any sense because you can make you can build the unit so fast with the little money you have that uh, it would make a difference. You don't have. I mean, if you build four units in two in two uh, places or once uh, or four in one, the difference is so minimal that in the long run it wouldn't make a difference. You can, of course, build a some uh, another one so you can deploy them uh, in the left and right side of the map or whatever. Of course, of course, absolutely. But that's not what base building is. Here, the buildings are just spawn models. It are basically the only function they have is to spawn units that you that you need. Uh, the units, the the arsenal upgrades all the units. And yeah, the build the the upgrades, uh, weapons and stuff that are made uh, inside the units themselves. It's a couple of some kind of upgrade, upgraded, some not. But there's nothing else to the buildings. Uh, and again, your uh, your power generator and your base turret or whatever it is. They are already there, so you don't even can build that. So yeah, anyway, uh, uh, stop for now, I think I did enough. It's really, I think it's kind of sad to see that. Uh, I tell you, sad, because there's a serious lack of RTS games. Uh, I mean, considering that uh, the only real RTS games you can probably count on one hand, if you have a couple of figures lost already. 
And because we, uh, I mean, we, we won't see a new CNC, Common and Conqueror, or whatever the current, whatever this is. Uh, StarCraft uh, just remade themselves without really adding anything. And uh, yeah, it's 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 it's, it's, it's kind of RGS, that's okay. It's a, a fine RGS, I guess. Um, then we have, uh, what's they called, Escalation whatever. Uh, then yeah, there are all these RTS that that we used to like uh, are either just redone badly or or just buried alive or just dead actually so better. So yeah, and instead we get another version of uh, a MOBA. And please, uh, this is really the only thing that you can call this. Uh, I don't see how this is anything different than a MOBA. Because it's basically just uh, who spawns the more, I who's, who can spawn more units and send them uh, down the road. And of course, you can say, yeah, but there is tactics. Yes, the tactic involved is that first of all, and then let me just be clear. Of course, you can tell, you can say that your units need to be uh, whoever can build the better counter units to the other one has an advantage, and that's true. That's absolutely true. If you come with a unit that is weak to melee, and I have, to, I happen to have uh, a bunch of uh, assault marines, I will kill your units, and then you will come with uh, units that can kill the assault marines, and you will do that as well. And then I spawn my hero, and then we kill whatever units you have, and then you may or may not have the right hero to counter my hero, and that's the point here. That's exactly my point here. The, the, the game, after all, if you take away skill, let's take away skill because you can always they say, yeah, but the better one beats the one. Of course, the better one beats the less good one. But if both parties involved have the same skill level and maybe even use the same, the same uh, faction, it all boils down to which heroes each one choose. So, and you cannot see the other guy's heroes from the beginning, I think. Or you can see them, but too late, I, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, it all boils down to who has the better hero set, and that will win, if you have the same skill level. Now, please, please feel free to argue with me about this. There's a comment section, let me know if you want to flame, go ahead. I will give, I'll, I'll give this game some more chances. I will try it again. The next couple a bit uh, weekends when I can close open and I really want to see the campaign so a hey, relic if you want to let me play the campaign so I can make a I really I'd rather uh, review this game based on its campaign because I think it has a good potential there in the campaign I can see the heroes work I don't see them work in the multiplayer at all because of how unbalanced they are but I can see them work in the campaign. I like the I like the heroes in Warcraft 3, for example, Warcraft 3. There we had heroes with an inventory, with levels and whatever. It was fun. It was a fun idea that would spawn mobile games later on. And we hate the day that happened, but a lot of people liked them, so whatever. Anyway, I will I will not give a no. I mean, I won't score this game right now, but uh, I gave you my impressions. Uh, about it and so make with that what you want that's just how I see it so yeah thanks for watching uh, and I hope I see you again soon uh, check out my other videos as well I'm currently doing a Total War Warhammer a legendary playthrough with Chaos which should be done soon and yeah thanks everybody and see you again Sniper scout.
correspondence is useful only if it wins us this battle. Moving! Resources owned by our alliance are in danger. Sniper scouts deployed. Our alliance has lost a resource point. Ally, we have captured a point. Engaging emergency recall. What task can this one complete? Preparing arsenal construct. I am Gabriel. You have need of my fire? Where might we be? The enemy soldier team stands ready. A servitor is on route. I'm the Emperor. The Emperor lights our way. Servitor deployed. This one is configured for servitude. Initiating machine cult deployment. Chapter command fights with you. Chapter Master setting out. Make way! Their soldiers have me targeted. I'll setting out.